shock waves are very thin regions in the gas flow field typically on the order of a few molecular mean free paths where the flow properties are practically discontinuous across its thickness a shock is a traveling wave that is it moves relative to the fluid faster than the local speed of sound one special type of a shock is the normal shock where the shock wave front is perpendicular to the free stream flow and is observed in some internal and external supersonic flow applications this is the most fundamental type of shock and in this lesson we will learn about the normal shock relations we will use these relationships to understand the flow behavior across the normal shocks in addition these relations will be employed to understand other types of shocks such as the oblique and bow shocks in later lessons to obtain mathematical relationships we assume a control volume around the shock wave for the purpose of this analysis we assume the shock to be an infinitely thin discontinuity across which the flow properties sharply vary let us say that the flow properties just upstream of the shock are denoted by the subscript 1 our goal would be to estimate the properties just downstream of the shock wave which are denoted by the subscript 2 Due to the one dimensional nature of the normal shock wave as the shock front is traveling parallel to the fluid flow along the x direction we use the one dimensional governing equations as our starting point here are the continuity momentum and the energy equations we obtain the following relationship by combining these equations with the ideal gas law This is popularly known as the Prandtl or Mayer relationship and A star refers to the speed of sound where the local Mach number is equal to 1 Using the definition of Mach number this relation is rewritten as shown here The new relationship leads to a very important conclusion pertaining to normal shocks that is the fluid velocity must drop from supersonic to subsonic across the shock wave this observation is quite useful in identifying shocks in numerical simulations if we look into this airfoil simulation it is clear that the local mach number decelerates from supersonic to subsonic across the shock using the following equation for m star the prandtl relationship is transformed as a relationship between the mach numbers upstream and downstream of the normal shock m1 and m2 respectively this relationship between m1 and m2 is plotted for air as shown here for small values of m1 the value of the downstream mach number m2 decreases sharply It is important to note that M1 is always supersonic that is M1 is greater than 1 As the upstream Mach number tends to infinity M2 approaches a constant finite value Mathematically this value depends only on the specific heat ratio of the fluid and is given by the following expression The equation shown here relates the upstream and downstream densities across the shock wave as a function of the upstream mach number the change in pressure across the shock wave is obtained from the momentum equation and this relationship is commonly referred to as the shock strength based on the ideal gas law these two equations are combined to obtain the temperature ratio across the shock wave The entropy relationship is used to understand the change in entropy across the shock wave. Mathematically, this is given by the following equation. Here, the definition of M is based on the upstream Mach number. The plot of the ratio of change in entropy and R 
versus the flow Mach number just before the normal shock is shown here. This plot is for air. As M1 square tends to 1, the value of S2 minus S1 approaches 0, that is, the shock is nearly isentropic. Such shocks are generally referred to as weak normal shocks and the change in pressure across the shock wave is small. For values of M1 square greater than 1, the value of S2 minus S1 is greater than 0. In other words, for upstream Mach numbers greater than 1, the change in entropy is always increasing, which is very much in accordance with the second law of thermodynamics. Recall that shock occurs over a small distance and across this distance, the effects of fluid viscosity and thermal conduction are important. Because of these irreversible dissipative phenomena, the entropy across a normal shock always increases. When the value of M1 square is less than 1, the obtained downstream entropy violates the second law of thermodynamics and this condition is physically prohibited. This mathematical analysis reiterates that the flow must decelerate from supersonic to subsonic across a normal shock. Finally, the total conditions upstream and downstream of a shock wave are also obtained in the similar manner. For a stationary normal shock in a calorically perfect gas, the total temperature before and after the normal shock is constant. Using this relationship, we can obtain the mathematical definition of change in entropy based on the total pressures just upstream and downstream of the shock wave. Using this analysis, the total pressure ratio is related to the upstream Mach number using the following equation. Now that we have looked at all the relationships, let us understand what happens across a normal shock. The downstream Mach number M2 decreases with increasing values of upstream Mach number M1. At very large values of M1, M2 approaches a constant finite value. An increase in M1 also results in an increase in the values of temperature, pressure and density ratios. As M1 becomes extremely large, the temperature and pressure ratios correspondingly also become large. The density ratio, however, approaches a finite value. The ratio of total pressure decreases with increasing M1. Based on the normal shock relations, it is understood that the static pressure across the normal shock always increases. This allows us to make the following observation. That is, a shock wave can also be visualized as a thermodynamic device that compresses the gas. This visualization provides us with a unique advantage of expressing the shock wave exclusively in terms of thermodynamic quantities without drawing any references to the fluid velocity or the Mach number. Replacing the velocity terms of the energy equation Using the expressions obtained from the continuity and the momentum equations, we can rewrite the change in internal energy of this compression device in the following manner. This equation is popularly known as the rankine huguenot equation. There are two important items to note here. We are expressing the change in internal energy in terms of pressure and specific volume of the system. And this equation is very generic and is valid for any type of gas, ideal, real or chemically reacting. Before wrapping up this lesson, let us try to understand the importance of the rankine huguenot equation. For a thermodynamic system under equilibrium, any state variable can be expressed in terms of any other two state variables. For example, the internal energy E can be expressed as a function of pressure and volume. Using this relationship, 
we simplify the rankine huguenot equation as follows when the upstream conditions p1 and v1 are known this equation provides us with the relationship between p2 and v2 when plotted on the pressure volume chart the rankine huguenot curve represents the locus of all possible pressure volume conditions downstream of the normal shock for one specific set of p1 and v1 each point on this curve represents different shocks with different upstream mark number this curve is however very different from the isentropic curve passing through point 1 Note that the slopes of these two curves at point 1 is the same. This tells us that point 1 on the rankine huguenot curve represents an infinitely weak shock. For a calorically perfect gas, the rankine huguenot relationship can be mathematically written as follows. That brings us to the end of this lesson.